Well, Randy, certainly this really stings for a lot of you at home that were looking forward to this starting with the 12 day fair in August. But Randy, as you mentioned, there is really a ripple effect here, not only with the regional economy, but really across the state here specifically. A lot of vendors were counting on this uh, and a lot of money going to go out the door here this year and they're going to have to just try to recover for 2021. Here is a photo from happier days at the iconic Kiwanis Malt Shop. Profits from the vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry flavors at the fair have helped the Kiwanis Club raise more than $2 million for kids' programs over the past half century. Kiwanis is serving the children of the world. But Roseville Club President Todd Levig will have to find a different way to raise that money in 2020. It's disheartening right now because we already know that so many of the agencies like Feed My Starving Children, the food shelves and things are already in need and knowing that we're not gonna have this opportunity to raise funds again, is, it, 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 really, it really hits you, hits you things, makes you step back. The Kiwanis Malt Shop and hundreds of other vendors will take a hit without revenue from the 12-day fair, and it's a blow to the entire upper Midwest economy. Every year it's Super Bowl size. As General Manager Jerry Hammer knows well, the fair generated $268 million in economic impact, according to the most recent 2018 study. Yearly revenue is also vital for the fair's continuing operations. Well, yeah, we're going to basically go a year without revenue, but we're prepared to do that because we need to do the right thing. There's just too much of a risk. And so uh, at first, you know, you're upset, but the more you think about it, you totally agree with them that they had to do what they had to do. Despite the disappointment, Kiwanis members are thinking of creative ways to replace lost malt shop revenue from the fair. We could develop a uh, drive-by whether it be a fire hall or an old warehouse, place your order, pick it up and drive on out. And then we can still have that income. 2020 may be untraditional, but it will make the next fair in 2021 all the more important. It's a fun time to be here and waiting another year for it is, it's going to be heartfelt. And I mentioned that number, $268 million in the recent 2018 study, and the economic impact. More than a quarter of that is directly to wages for employees, uh, 12,000 jobs and more supported by the state fair. So really, this is felt on a really deep level here, personally, for a lot of workers in the Twin Cities. You bet. Back so many people hurt in so many different ways because of this today. Thank you, Danny.